Welcome to Pulp Fiction. And we start off right away with these two peeps being all like, let's rob some shit. No. Yes. Okay. What place do we rob? I don't know. Well, how about this place? This place? Yes, this place. All right. This is a robbery. Nobody fucking mode. I'll fucking show you you fucking. Then we cut to two dudes driving around talking about weed and burgers. And they're on their way to pick up a package for their boss, Marcellus, from some fucker that didn't deliver it or was hiding it from them. I don't fucking know. So they're like his gang members or henchmen. And and, and Marcellus is like the big daddy boss man, man gang member guy or mob boss. I don't know. So they get to where they're going. They stand by the door and Joseph's like, it's too early. Let's go over there and talk about some feet. So after they do that for a couple of minutes, he's like, hmm, hmm. Why the fuck is, is there a voice crack in my hmm? <laughs> oh, fuck. So they go there and do that for a couple of minutes, and he's like, hmm, yeah, now's the time, let's go. <laughs> okay, I feel like I could have gotten in right away, but whatever. They knock on the door and get in there and find three dudes. Jules eats Ferris Bueller's food. Vincent gets the package or the briefcase, which could contain anything from a COVID-69 vaccine to a 12-inch solid gold luminescent dildo. We don't know, and they never tell us. They just look at it all the time like... Whoa. Then Jules kills this dude, quotes the Bible, and they both unload into Ferris Bueller. Boom, next chapter, we got bald, boozy boy Butch Willis. He's a boxer, Marcellus is bribing him to throw a match. Being all like, fuck pride, eat shit, you my bitch, you gonna throw this match. And boozy boy obviously doesn't like that, but he still takes the money. Then Jules and Vince walk in, and they're not in suits no more. Jules goes to the bathroom while Vince stresses because Marcellus wants him to take out his wife, Mia, for a good time and dinner. And Marcellus is a very dangerous man who just finished talking to Boosie, and he calls over Vince and hugs him. Now cut to Vince buying some heroin and shooting it up. Then driving over to Mia to take her out for dinner. He gets there, she snorts some coke, and then we see her stanky feet. They go out to eat, talk about some shit, and she orders a really expensive milkshake, which she just has to taste to see if it's worth it. And she's like, don't worry, you don't have to take a straw out. I don't have cooties. Uh, hello? That's exactly how viruses get transferred, you dumbass unhygienic bitch. Stay safe while she has fucked the Toyota Corolla virus. Then she goes to the bathroom to quote unquote powder her nose, but we all know what that means. No! Cook! She comes back, they dance to win a trophy, go back to her house for some drinks and music, and he goes to the bathroom to work up the courage to tell her thanks but no thanks, because if shit goes too far with her, Marcellus is gonna make sure that he ceases to exist. Meanwhile, crackhead Mia, who is wearing his coat, finds the heroin that he bought in his pocket, and she's like, oh yes, yummy nose candy. She snores that shit, and I don't know too much about drugs, but I'm guessing her brain starts to self-destruct. Vince comes out and he finds her overdosed. So he puts her in his car and drives over to his dealer's house, instead of going to the hospital because cops and stuff. He crashes into his dealer's house and tells him that if he doesn't help her, they're both fucked. And honestly, at this point, I don't think it even matters. I think she's pretty much fucking dead, but then again, I don't know much about drugs. So he drives her in the house, and this bitch starts looking for a little book that's supposed to tell him how to administer an adrenaline shot to the fucking heart. But he can't find the book anywhere because he's an unorganized little freak. So he's like, fuck it, here's a thing, here's a heart, you do it. They count to three using some very long Mississippis, which is just giving her more time to die if she hasn't already, and then Vince stabs her in the heart and she springs back to life. Bullet dodge. Now all you have to do is deal with the permanent brain damage she got from overdosing. Libby, he takes her home and they promise each other never to speak of this incident to Marcellus. Next scene, we cut to a kid and an army dude who was in a POW camp with his father. And his father really wanted to give him this watch that he kept up his ass for five years and this guy kept up his ass for two years. So in total, that's seven years of watch up ass. Now I'm really interested in how they would take a shit, like would you take it out of your ass take a shit and then shove it back up or would you shit it out and then rummage through your feces and then plug it back in your ass i also feel like this is a very unnecessary question jump cut whoa the kid turns out to be butch and he's about to go into the fight and he doesn't even have time to throw it because he fucking kills the guy and then jumps out of the building into a dumpster which apparently had no sharp objects in it at all because he came out fine and then in that same alley there's a lady with her cab who was listening out on the fight she heard what was going on that he fucking killed the guy in the fight and then she sees the dude jump out of a fucking building that the fight was in, in boxing clothing, and she's like, hmm, yes. Yes, that is my guy. What a great potential customer. <laughs> so you now he takes that cab and on the way to wherever the fuck she's taking him, he throws out his boxing gloves and his boxing gear out the window, basically leaving breadcrumbs for Marcellus' guys who are out looking for him. Not only that, he also gives her his name. Bro, this is not how you go about being discreet, you fucking moron. Now I know he pays her off at the end so she can keep her mouth shut about driving him anywhere, but you don't think Marcel can pay her double to get this information? Anyway, she drives the bitch over to wherever the fuck he wants to go, to a motel where he goes in and finds his petite French girlfriend. And they do it, they shower, they sleep, they wake up. They wake up and he looks through his suitcase that she packed for him while he was at the fight because they want to run away now that Marcel's is looking for the ass. But he can't find his ass watch, which he specifically told her to pack. So he throws a tantrum and then decides to go to his apartment and get the watch. Although it's pretty dangerous since Marcel's goons are probably already there. But he doesn't care. He doesn't give a fuck. He wants his ass watch. And he takes his girlfriend's shitty ass Lohana, goes over there and parks one street away and inserts the key very cautiously and quietly into the hole, unlocks the door, then fucking opens it loud as shit. Like, bro, you completely negated the purpose of the whole key caution and parking a street away. What, you had the brains to do that, but you can't open the door quietly? What the fuck? 
what's wrong with you? Anyway, Fucker gets in, he finds his watch and he does not leave. No, he snoops around a bit and finds that no one's there. Then he's like, mm, I'm gonna make myself some food. Fucking dipshit, you haven't looked around properly. That's first of all. Second of all, if they're not here, they're probably on their way here right now, you idiot. But as we're about to find out, he's not alone because at the end of the kitchen counter, he finds an Uzi with a very girthy silencer on it. Then he hears a toilet flush and someone opens the bathroom door and it's Vincent. Very surprised to see Butch holding his gun and Butch shoots him up and kills him. He literally, almost literally, caught him with his pants down. Very lucky, yes. However, other than Butch being the dumbest fuck imaginable, there are a few things wrong here. First of all, who the fuck leaves their gun on the kitchen counter when they go to take a shit? Fucking Vincent. Especially in a situation like this, you take your gun wherever the fuck you go. Second, if Butch can hear the toilet flush from over there, then whoever the fuck is in the bathroom should be able to hear all of this. What do you take a crap with earmuffs on or some shit? And third, when Butch leaves, he wipes down the gun with some tissue paper to remove it of all his prints. But he does a very shitty job of it. Bitch, you held that fucking silencer like you're about to jack it off. Your prints are definitely still on there. You fucking suck at this. Butch leaves feeling good about himself, and when he stops an intersection, fucking Marcellus starts crossing the road, and, and Butch tries to run him over but then gets hit by a car himself. Marcellus gets up very dazed and tries to shoot Butch, but misses and hits this girl. And considering how fucked up he is right now, it's a pretty good shot, honestly. And just a quick observation here, all the bystanders were female. Why that is, I don't know. Butch tries to run away and Marcellus gives chase. Butch ends up in a fucking pawn shop or something and he hides behind fucking glass and gets the drop on Marcellus, punches him a bit and tries to kill him before the shop owner pulls a shotgun on him and tells him to throw the gun away then he knocks him out and they both pass out and wake up in the basement with gag balls in their mouths tied to chairs and then some dude Zed walks in and the other guy opens the room and pulls out a fucking sex slave out of a box. I don't even know what the fuck is going on anymore. Anyway, he ties up the sex slave and Zed pulls in Marcellus to probably do some fucking butt sex with him. The other guy likes to watch apparently so he goes in and shuts the door and Butch hears what's going on in the room so he musters up enough strength to bust out of his constraints, knock out the sex slave and try to escape before he feels bad for Marcellus and his unfortunate fate. So he comes back and takes his sweet ass time choosing a weapon from the wide assortment of shit he has available to smack them down with before he finally settles on a katana. Then he goes down there and opens the room silently, see you can open doors silently fuckface, and he sees what Zed is doing to Marcellus and viewers who are easily squeamish should look away right now because... Absolutely gruesome. So he kills this bitch and then holds Zed at knife point? I don't fucking know. But he holds him there for a bit and this being a Tarantino movie, I'm guessing he's gonna slice his dick off. Wait, Marcel says him to step aside and uh, he blasts his dick off with a shotgun. Well, you know, different methods, same result. His dick's no longer attached to his body, so I kinda called it. Anywho, Marcel tells Bush that they're cool on two conditions. First, that nobody finds out about this. And second, You leave town tonight. Right now. So tonight, but right now, you got that homeboy? So Butch takes Zed's bike and goes over to his girlfriend to pick her up and leave. And she keeps calling the bike a motorcycle. And he's like, no, it's a chopper. L listen, dude, it's a, a chopper is a type of bike, okay? Relax. Fucking, ugh, this guy, this motherfucker. You know what? Who cares? Who cares? Because that's the last we're going to see of that motherfucker and his bitch. Because he takes her and they skip down. Next chapter, we're going back in time to when Ferris Bueller died. And after he got shot, some fourth dude came out the bathroom with a fucking gun. And he emptied his gun into Jules and Vincent, but misses all his shots. So Jules and Vincent kill him too. And they take the last guy with him in the car, where Jules tells Vincent that what just happened was a miracle. And a sign from God that he should retire. And it certainly was a miracle, because judging from where you were standing and where the bullets landed, he didn't miss his shots phased through you and left you unharmed. Whatever, Vincent. Vincent thinks this miracle retirement talk is a bunch of BS, so he turns to take this sad sack of shit's opinion and accidentally blows his head off. And now that the insides of the car are covered in blood and so are they, they can't stay on the road. So they go over to Jules' friend's house, Hey Quinn, and he says that if his wife comes back an hour and a half from work and she finds a dead body in her house, she's gonna divorce his ass and he doesn't want that. So Jules calls Marcellus, Marcellus calls the wolf guy, and wolf guy comes over in his NSX and he's supposed to help them deal with their current situation. But he's kinda useless honestly because all he tells them to do is clean up the car and cover up the seats with some cloth. Rinse themselves off and change into some acquaintance clothes. So all obvious common sense shit, you know? The only usefulness he provided was a junkyard that's gonna deal with the body and the car to dispose of evidence. So technically speaking, if they're any smart, they kinda done all that shit by themselves and hit the car in some discreet location and call them later for the junkyard. Anywho, after all that shit happens, Vince and Jules go over for some breakfast before they drop the briefcase off by Marcellus. And while they eat, they talk about pigs and how Jules wants to retire after this. Then Vincent gets up to take a shit. And that's the third time he goes to the bathroom in this movie. I don't know why I'm keeping count, but you know, that's the third time. And I remember these two dudes from the beginning of the movie. Yup, they're here and they're robbing this place, screaming all around, threatening people. Meanwhile, Vincent 
The toilet must be another building or something. That or he goes deaf every single time he enters a bathroom. Also, have you noticed every single time he goes into a bathroom, something important happens? He's like the Blitz, but only when he enters a bathroom. Anyway, back to the robbers. They're taking the money out of the cash register and taking everybody's wallets. And when they come to Jules, this bitch notices the briefcase. And hey, Jules, why the fuck didn't you at least attempt to hide the fucking briefcase under the table once you heard them yelling, this is a fucking robbery and whatnot? I mean, they still might have seen it, but hey, at least give it a shot, you dipshit. Anywho, after some back and forth between him and Jules, he shows them what's inside the briefcase and he's like, holy macaroni, is that? Jules pulls a fast one on him and disarms him and tells him to calm his girl down and proceeds to tell him that he's kind of a changing man now and he wants to help him. And it is at this point that Jules is finally done shitting and he comes out the bathroom like, what the fuck? So Jules tells him to stay cool and let him handle this. He gives this bitch all the money in his wallet, quotes the Bible but doesn't kill him and tells him to take the shit they stole and fuck off. Then shortly after him and Vincent do the same. The fucking end. This movie gets a UC Santa Cruz out of a banana slugs.